Jason Ghost Hunting. If you'd like to leave your name and phone number after the bit, I will get back to you shortly. Thank you. Hi Jason, uh, my name is Ben Lawrence. I'm a filmmaker in Sydney and I saw uh, an article about you in my local paper. Um, I'd be really interested in hearing about your ghost hunting. I just wondered if you had time to catch up this week. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hey Ben, um, I just got your message. Um, just let you know that I'm doing security on night shifts, so I've got a full week, but on the weekend, um, I do have a ghost hunt. So if you want to tag on, yeah, just get back to us and um, I'll talk to you then. Thanks, mate. Bye. Hey, Sometimes when we're driving, it's quite funny because you get people to put up and they ask questions. You know, what do you do? And you think, what do you what do you say when someone says, "What do you do?" Oh, we go go something. You know, we see if it's there or not, if it's true or not. If it is it's something paranormal, what does it normally turn out to be? Is it there... could be um, a lot of electricity um, in the area, and that can cause you to think something could be happening. You could be depressed. People could be doing depression too and makes you think something's happening too. It could be anything, you know what I mean? So sometimes you can't nail it down. But sometimes you get the photos that <laughs> you can't explain when you're out there doing them. When I walk in I, with the team, I sit down and say, hey, my name's Jason, and all the other guys introduced themselves, who's there? And we say, we're here to help. Anybody would like to talk to us? This is your chance to come forward and say hello and tell us who you are. And then we start asking different kind of questions, each, each person in the group. This is my wife, Margaret, Jessica, my daughter. Um, there's Danny, she's the medium. There's Peter, uh, he's a funny guy. I've classed him as my family. It's like a bond there for us. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell me what's been happening in here? Uh, something get moved. What, sliding sounds, scraping? Something like this, or a cop be picked up. People told me they have lived a very long time ago a girl and she died, but not sure of what. One day I have a shave, I did this in the mirror, mm. she stood next to me. You saw this? Yeah. Oh, wow. I the little girl. I'm going to do that. Look, Jason, look. Yeah. This is one of my cameras I use to take photos. Um, been using this, this camera for, since of day one of my um, ghost hunting world. Been fun, got all kinds of stuff on that. Voice recorder, um, use that for catching EVPs and stuff like that, pretty good. What are EVPs? Um, voice, um, white sounds, like we can't hear, but when you've got a voice recorder, if a spirit's talking, they can pick it up on really good handy. The web camera. Um, you know, I use that for, you know, catching, you know, using when I walk around places. K2 meter, um, helps when you want to communicate to the spirits, um, you ask them to light up the lights. Show yourself. Are you here? Come and light up the light, it won't hurt you. Here we go. There he goes. So you are young. So about five years old or six? I don't charge. I do it because I love it. The only thing I charge if they just pay my fuel. I don't believe in charging somebody for a problem that's not really their problem. And what I get out of it is seeing them happy. You know, I go back a couple of months later and wing them up and say, hey, how are you doing? And they're over the world happiness, you know. That gives me the big kick, you know, like, wow, that family's happy. Let's move on to the next. If, if one of you is not scared, oh, no. you should follow and eat the house or have a room. Oh, I've been yeah, asking the neighbours. They'll only be living here for five or six years. Yeah, 
anybody on it, he's allowed to make contact. Tell me about the first ghost you saw. Um, I lost my brother into a car accident. He was driving a cab in Warrnambool. Police have not released the names of the men who died when a Holden sedan and a taxi collided on the Cobden Camperdown Road. Three passengers in the taxi, all Cobden footballers, were taken to the Royal Melbourne and Geelong. Basically, we swerved the car a little bit to the left so he could take the full impact, and the three guys got out. They survived, and he was a hero there. After the funeral was finished, it would have been about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. I just walked in the door, you know, as I was sitting there watching TV, I looked over, he was just sitting there looking at me. You know, and I shook my head a couple of times, you know, and after seeing somebody that passed away, that seen him sitting there, and next minute he started talking, you know, how you going? I was like, nah, he didn't say that, you know what I mean? I'm shaking my head, you know, this can't be happening to me. So he said, hello again. I'm so way back, you know, and boy, you know, we just started talking about all, all the good things we, me and him did over the past. Boy, you know, the ghost hunting world for myself started opening up, and that's when it all started. Hello? I'm around Sean, myself. My camera there. My camera set up in I never knew I had a brother until um, I was 18, I think it was, 19. Um, he found me when I was working as a storeman. I got a call to go down, and there's a guy down at the front that wants to see me. I didn't know who this guy was, and he came up and said, I'm your brother. I said, no, you're not, you're not my brother. I haven't got a brother. He goes, yes, you do. So I'm on the phone to me mum, this old phone, and mum, who the hell is this guy named Peter, you know, like, who is this guy? He goes, yes, that's your brother, I didn't tell you about him, he was adopted out when I was young. I almost had a heart attack. And it was just incredible how fast we come really, really close. Me and my brother wanted to know if we shared the same dad, were we full brothers? And so we started looking and looking and mum wouldn't give us any information about it. And then we started you know, doing the search and seeing what we could find. And we started really, really, you know, going through the yellow pages and ringing up all these different numbers or, or what I was trying to try to find him. And we tried and tried looking for him and then that's before you know it, he was killed in a car accident and then it all stopped. But I promised him that I will find out if we had the same dad. That's a photo of me, my sister and my dad. Really, I don't know where that photo was taken. I've got no idea. It's the only photo I've got of my, of my dad. And I was always curious, who was my dad? I was raised by a single mum. I kept asking her, who is he? I don't need to know, don't, need, don't worry about him, don't worry about him. And that gave him even more termination, you know, like, <laughs> the relationship me and my mum had, <laughs> hell no, you're not gonna tell me what to do, I'm gonna find him, I wanna know who he is. I got told by a friend to say, yeah, look up on the hospital records, because it might be, because I was trying to find him, he might have his full name or something on record, so I got all my hospital records up, with reading and reading. There was one time my dad saw me, and I thought he might have his full name, but he only had Jay King, didn't help. So then I said, hang on, what's all this? And I started reading it, and it's like, oh my God. And I didn't believe it, you know, this how bad it was. You know, going in hospital and then get released back in hospital, going in and out all my life. And you know, it's pretty brutal what I was reading, you know, the amount of hemorrhage, blood transfusions and stuff like that. It was full on, it wasn't a really good life for me. So you were discovering what happened to you? Yeah. Through the records? Through the records, I had no memories at all. Some, some doctors say I blanked it out because it was that bad on me that I just blocked it. You know, there's something I don't want to remember. What was the thing that stood out for you the most? Um, the photos. I was sort of trying to smile, but you know, I got no teeth and 
I've got my scar there, you can see really fresh. What about your mum? What did she say? And when I got the hospital records, I went to her and I said, what's this? She said, that's all lies. None, none of that's true. And I said, you signed the papers. Your name's on the papers. She said, I was a clumsy kid, apparently. <laughs> Kept falling over. Where is she now? I don't talk to her. <laughs> um, she turned up on the scene one day and Margaret went off at her. Told her to get out of the house, never to come back, and, and never seen her since. If you were able to find your father, what would that mean to you? A lot, because I've got a lot of questions. Why? Most important thing, why? Where were you? Why didn't you help me? Why didn't you get me out of there? Why? That's the most important question, why? Hey Jason, it's Ben. Um, I wanted to organise some more filming with you and I've got some ideas about how to find your father. Um, so give me a call uh, when you get a chance and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. back here for a while then, um, me and Margaret just broke up, um, been, been through some rough patches, I've just been laying low, but now I'm just letting you know that I've got a new team together, and um, yeah, we're going to go and do a ghost hunt, so yeah, my mobile's back on, I do apologise for not answering my phone, but it's been a bit hard on me at the moment, it's been through some really, really bad times, so hey, just letting you know I'm back, bye. Uh, tonight, as I explained to him, what we're going to do is, because this is your house, everybody's going to come in. So, like, we'll start off, like, my name is Jason, and then Blaze and all them will kick in. There's a, there's a shadow, look, there's a, a skeleton there, look. And what, what do you think it is? Oh, oh. Spirits, it's got to be like spirits, it has to be. I'm going to get my two lovely ladies here, my daughter and Blaze. We're going to holy water this place. There's nothing better than the holy water. Tell me about your team. Who have you got at the moment? I've got Blaze, she's my girlfriend now, and I've got Felicity, her daughter. I treat her as my own daughter. My brother Sean, he's part of my family more than anything else too now. He's an investigator, he does a bit of a voking. That's a shame that you and Margaret broke up. Yeah, a lot of arguments, a lot of breakdowns. Um, just, we're just constantly arguing, that just put me down every more. That's probably where I started finding depression for myself because I hated arguments. And the more we argued, the more I felt bad. And, and then, yeah, that's when it all started, my depression, I think. I tried to kill myself. Um, tried to overdose myself because I was just stressed to the max. Uh, woke up in hospital, my ex found me in the car. It was the worst time of my life and never got, could, couldn't believe I was in that situation, you know? And, they just built it off because of the amount of depression and I never had help and delivered it the hard way and never really had anybody to return to the help for. So that's why I ended up hitting the bad parts for myself. And I, I just thought I was following my daughter, who I love the most, my daughter Jessica. And my daughter said, don't worry, Dad. You've got you to start up. You've got to start from the bottom and get yourself back up again. And I looked at her and I said, I'm going to do it for you. And it took me a while to get out of there, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of motivation for myself and um, just pushed everything, everything, anything in myself. It just drove myself hard. And then after that, things just all changed and now, you know, I'm happier and got a beautiful girlfriend. And when I'm, she sees right through me, when I'm in pain, she goes, why don't you tell me? And I try to hide it, but she always, she always knows when I'm in pain. She gives it to me. <laughs> 
So I've been looking at your records mm -hmm. that you gave me because I want to help you find your dad. Okay. And there's a number of addresses that I think we can go to okay. and find. Sounds good. But that would help me a lot because due to my reading, I can't read the best in these things. So who first read them for you, though? Uh, Margaret. Okay. Margaret started reading bits and pieces of it. I mean, the best thing I could do is go, like I said, is find the addresses. Yep make a list of them and we can just start going back and looking. I mean, there may be people there that either remember you mm -hmm. or your mum yep. or, you know, maybe so, your dad. Yep. I don't know. Or maybe you remember something. That's it there, is it? Wow. I remember. Do you remember anything? Oh. So this place up here is... You were living here when you were three? Wow. And um, I think this is where you've got your scarf. This is the incident where your dad signed you into the hospital. That's his signature. What damage was done to your palate stuff? No, it was all smashed out. That's why it goes up. I haven't got a palate, low palate mine's way up high. Seems in the hospital records you went back quite a few times. Yeah. Because the scar was bothering you, would that be right? Yeah. Probably yeah. I just didn't like it, you know, maybe I just didn't like the scar. You get called Frankenstein and all that, that's probably another reason why I hate it even more. Got bullied. Did you? Yeah. Does this guy? Hopefully, you know, like all the houses I'm going to go to, might be able to jar some memories for myself and be able to move on for myself. contact me and she knew me as a kid. Um, can you give me a call later and I'll tell you tell you more about it. Thanks mate. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ask her, you know, like I've, I've got no memories, and she has always go swimming and stuff like that together. And I was like, well, you know, this, this might be an opportunity for me to remember my childhood, you know, it might jar something in my head. She sent me a photo of, of when she was little, didn't, didn't ring any bells to me, and they were talking about all the little things we used to do. 
So that was pretty, you know, like, cool, you know, I've got some bit of memory, you know, like, some members might be able to inform me. Like whip for these guys and brown sugar. They love it. Come on. Very young. There's no more coming yet. Normally we get up about up to 20, 30, 40 of these guys here. Mm. <laughs> Starts off with one, then two, then you got the rest coming. Stop it, Jack. Come on, Jack, stop it. Come on. I know you want to come out, but you can't come out. Sean, he drives me insane, but I love him as my, my best brother ever. Um, he reminds me a lot of my brother too. I, I met Sean to a friend and we started being like brothers. I promised his mum that I would look after him. And after a while, then I moved in and then started helping him. Just basically went from there. You know, me and Blaze split up. Oh, you're kidding. Nah, she was, it was, we were having a bit of arguments and stuff like that. She thought I was cheating on her, but I wasn't, you know what I mean? Well, that's, that's a shame, I'm sorry to hear that. You are all right otherwise? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm just moving on. OK, so I'm going to come and see you next week. I've got to show you some yep. documents and stuff like that about your dad. Sounds good to me, mate. And you're getting to meet my new beautiful girlfriend, Naz. Oh, cool. Yeah, she's here, she's lovely. And she's an extremely good cook. OK, cool. OK, mate, well, um, I'll, I'll call you in the morning, but, yeah, we'll, we'll work, work towards the lunchtime. So I just went down, I went through the records and was able to break down just a list of addresses and then and the amount of places that we're seeing in your homes. Mm. Month, you know, one month here, two weeks here. Yeah. You know, it's quite amazing how much you moved around. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty miserable. I remember playing up and down here, running up and down, and running up and down the deck staircases and stuff like that, so. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember my sister being here, I'm not sure. But um, I know my dad used to come here. He used to visit me here, and that was it. And uh, West is a blur to me from here. Why do you say you remember your dad being here? Because I remember him coming up and saying hello to me, and my mum, you know, like was there, sitting at the kitchen table or something like that, and sitting there talking. And that's when I was, after a while, I got sent to my room. So I remember seeing him come here. So it's one little place I do remember. Hello, Jason. How are you doing, Jason? It's been yeah. many, many years yeah. since I saw you last. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Come in. No, I think. Pleasure to see you as an adult. Yeah. I hear you've been on the search, have you? Yeah, I've been on the search. Lots of searching, and um, this is how I found you, all through my hospital records. You know, a couple of places you've been when you come up, um, you know. It's also, I believe, well, what, I, what I read is uh, um, an extraordinarily sad story. Unfortunately, in social welfare, what tends to happen is families like this that move continuously, as his mum um, moved on and on, was to evade any real scrutiny. However, what was there in front of us at the time was sufficient to deeply alarm me. In fact, um, with the records, he went to six different schools in about 18 months they will be moving perpetually. She was using drugs, she'd been drinking. Um, the husband was a violent man.
So when one walked into that home, from, for instance, if one was out at school or something, he would never know what was going on. So there'd be no root, proper routines. There'd be no expectation that today will be similar to yesterday. And it is this that leads children to be very fearful. In fact, it would appear that it is so dreadful in so many different ways in which he really can't remember anything. I think he's walled off a lot of what was happening so that he can't remember, he doesn't have to think about it. It tells me two things. One, that it very really probably was um, cumulative harm. What he describes is not unusual in some really badly over time abused children. That it isn't one dramatic incident often. It's also very indicative of a child who's constantly neglected. But this is a chronic pattern in which he was hospitalized numbers of times, said to be clumsy. And so I think that he comes from a family of chronic neglect and abuse. I enjoyed talking to her. She explained a lot to me about like how I was, I was just a good little kid. Wasn't a clumsy kid, wasn't a misbehaved kid, nothing. You know what I mean? It meant a lot to hear that. And she, she was very, very happy how I've turned out. You know where we're going now? No. Uh -uh. So it's the um, fish and chip shop. Oh god. <sighs> Nothing that bad there. Hello. Should be a counter here. Yeah. Probably up to here, from here. Stove over here. The pinball machines and games over here. And what, what do you remember about coming in here? Uh, Mum and Dad cooking in here, running a restaurant. And, yeah, I wasn't allowed up here much. I was, I, was, I was never allowed to go anywhere. Just come in, get and go back out. That's it, you can't go upstairs, you can't do nothing. Have a look. Yeah. Probably explains why, because there's bedrooms up here and Maybe that's probably why. Every time I used to come up, it was like, no, don't go up there. You're not allowed to go up there. Get away from those stairs. You ever see people coming up here? Yeah. Like I said, you know, like kids. A lot. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Who would have come up? Girls, I think. Did, did you, do you remember people walking out to the back of the shop? Yeah. My dad. And there was a little girl. I, I don't know who the girl is. Just walk up here. And then I never seen her. And then I go, go home. Go home. I went home. Is that something you're remembering? Yeah, that's what I remember. Your reaction was like you'd been in here. I don't know. I just don't know why. 
There's something going on in this room. Yeah, I can feel it. I can see a lot of crying, a lot of upset. That's what I'm feeling. And it was definitely your dad that was in here. Yeah. Easy. What could you see? The park. I just be able to look out the window and see the park. You think that was here? Yeah. Kathy and Jade. What is it? Names on the wall. You've got Kathy, Jade, Christina. 1984. <laughs> Do you reckon it's them? I don't know. It's just so funny. Yeah, you know, I walk up here and I, I see that sitting there. Hey, how you doing, mate? Hey, how you going? Oh, pretty good. I just got an email from the police asking questions about my dad. What did they, what did they say? They want to talk to me about my dad's things in the past, what he might have done, so they're thinking about coming out and seeing me and having, and having a chat with me. That's incredible. And did, did you say you were looking for him as well? Yeah, I told about that. Well, maybe we'll definitely find him then. If they're looking yeah. for him, it's the best chance we've got. I'll try and come out and see you then, tomorrow, after this, yep, yep. and um, see what happened. I didn't know what I would be faced with when I contacted Jason. I didn't know if he'd be in contact with his father. I didn't know if he'd be similar to his father. I knew, I knew nothing about him. And so I, I sought to find out as much as I could covertly, and eventually I just thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. I can't, I've just got to give him a call. First question, um, what memories of areas where I used to live and I told him, you know, like I remember being in a house up from a, a house where there used to be a milk bar where they used to own. And I said, yeah, that's the house that's in question. What did they say you'd done? And they said he's raped a couple of kids and, you know, young. And how old do you think the victims were? Uh, probably seven, eight, probably younger. But um, it just makes me sick knowing that I've got a dad who did that. You know, like I see a lot of family with their dads, you know what I mean? The, the kids look up to their dads for advice and get, you know, some kind of knowledge of what a dad will pass on to a son. I didn't have that, you know what I mean? I had to fight my way. And when we started looking and looking, I thought, yeah, you know, I'm gonna have a proper dad around in my life. And after I found out what everything he's done, it horrified me inside, you know, like, no, I had a dad that did all that, you know what I mean? Like. You know, like a lot of people would look at me, some would think, you know, you're probably like your dad, but I'm nothing like my dad. So I just wanted to do what was right and find him and get him locked up. So a lot of people, I'm not gonna hide my dad of what he's done. No way, why should I? Um, he's done wrong, he needs to be punished.
Jason on Facebook that day and uh, had contacted him. I was quite um, unsure. You know, you don't know if he's been like his father. You, you just don't know. So you, I tried very carefully. And then when he started talking about Ellen and what his father had done and how angry he was, it made me think, okay, he's a little bit normal and, you know, he's okay and he's just as angry as we are. So I sent um, Ellen an email saying that, you know, I was a victim of this bad man that she's looking for and he'd ruined my life and I'm looking for help, pretty much. A few years back, I was thinking, you know what, like, I need to start dealing with some of this stuff because obviously it's affecting me. I was 11 when it happened, same age as my daughter now. And then I was starting to think to myself, now, if my daughter went through this, would I want her to feel ashamed? Would I want her to feel guilty or to feel anything but other than a victim. And I thought to myself, no. There were times when I was a young girl and I was 16, 17, I was pretty bad alcoholic, I guess trying to cope with everything. And I constantly saw him in cars, following me, um, walking down the street. If I saw someone or a man with a similar complexion and those kind of glasses, I would just go into panic mode and flee. He was a ghost. I didn't even know him as Jack. I knew him as John or Lionel, and I didn't even know why I knew him as two names. So I really just need to know, is he out there? Where is he? Is he alive? Jason, it's Ben. Um, I've just got some news about your father. Uh, Detective Quinn's been trying to ring you, but uh, if you give me a call, I can fill you in. Um, yeah, give me a call as soon as you get the message. Bye. Maybe I should play the message she left for me instead of waiting for her. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go for it. Have a listen, and then she might call. <laughs> Morning, Ben. It's Ellen Quinn from Marion Hill Detectives. Um, I've been trying to get in touch with Jason for a couple of days. I was ringing him with good news, and that's that I've located his father. I located him in Perth, well, in Fremantle, actually, and extradited him from what? up there to Sydney yesterday. Thank you. Bye. Wow. He got him. He got him in Perth. Fremantle. He's going to court today, is it? Yeah. In Parramatta. Oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Sean. Sean. Just kind of let my missus know. They got him. He was in Perth. What? Don't get speedy. No, 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 I won't speed, darling. No, 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 I'm just going to go and find a parking spot down there. You jump the back, Sean. Hello. Sorry, I, um, I'm, I've had my girlfriend over with Bub, so I can't um, answer my phone when she's crying at night time. So, three children. Wow. In Western Australia, yeah. But they don't know about me, okay. He doesn't remember me. No, oh, okay. He's gonna call me back. Um, he's got a memory lapse of a lot of things, but he, he doesn't remember me at all. At all. Wow, yeah, how could he not remember? A man facing dozens of sexual abuse charges dating back to the early 1980s will stay behind bars after being extradited to Sydney from Western Australia. 72-year-old John King did not apply for bail in Parramatta court today. King is accused of abusing a Sydney girl of whom he was the sole carer while she was aged between six and nine years old. He refused to get up in front of camera. Um, I was disappointed. I, I wanted to see him on camera. Have you seen the charges? No, I haven't seen them. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to see him. 
1994, yeah. When Ellen called me and said that she had him in WA and she was extraditing him from Western Australia the next morning, I can't even tell you how I felt. I think I howled, I think I screamed, I think I went woohoo, and then I think I cried again, <laughs> and then I think my whole body trembled, and I said, okay, I'm gonna feed my horse now. <laughs> because I was out feeding the horses and I just had to do something to distract me because it was just, wow. Now I can put my life into some perspective and have some happiness and know that he's off the street. And I just wish I could have done that sooner. I wish I could have saved those other generations, but I know I can't be responsible for that, but yeah, it feels so good to know that he is no longer a ghost and he can no longer stalk me, <laughs> even if it's in my own head. <laughs> The case as it stands now, there are nine victims and they relate to two sort of distinct periods in the 1980s. Prior to 1980, Jack King had a bit of an estranged relationship with his wife and the mother of his two children. But I believe they did keep in some contact with each other. So then in 1980, Jason's mother um, is required to go to hospital and Jack comes to look after the two kids. Now it's during that time when they lived in East Lakes that it appears Jack encouraged and cultivated some friends for Jason's sister. And Jack has subsequently committed some sexual offences against three of those girls. They were aged six at the time. Jack was given bail by the police and he never showed up to court. As a result, a warrant was issued for his arrest for those offences against those three six-year-olds. He then reappears in 1982, um, and that's when he adopts the fake name. That's when he's Lionel. And he meets up with Jade and he commits offences against Jade, Kathy, and Christina. Jade had been in a family where her mother had some drug abuse issues and some other issues. Jack integrated himself into her mother's life and it was in that way that Jack became a carer of sorts for Jade. How do you think Jack justified that to Jason and his mother? I have no idea how he justified that to them. And I, I really don't know what they would have thought about it. I don't think that Jack had much regard for Jason. And I don't think that Jason was much used to Jack because it was young girls that he appeared to have an interest in. And so it was young girls that he used to lure other young girls into his life. I know that Jason's mother knew about the offences that Jack had previously committed. So I can't imagine it would have been a surprise to her what he was doing with Jade. But whether or not it was ever discussed, I have no idea. I know that Jack started running a fish and chip shop and that when he did, I understand Jason's mother participated in that venture and assisted in the fish and chip shop. But I also can't explain why. There's no evidence she knew of or was present for any of the abuse. How I sort of met Jade was, you know, she was actually used as a pawn 
to bring other victims in. One day Christina and I had gone to the fish and chip shop. He had taken over the shop and pretty much said to us that he's just moved into the area. It was his daughter's birthday coming up and she didn't really have any friends as they just moved there and invited us to her birthday party. I don't know if she got the swimming pool for her birthday or not, but there was a pool and I don't know if it was the same weekend or the weekend after, but basically we were helping digging a hole to put this pool in. And that's pretty much when it all started. Can we talk about the locations, the places in your childhood? What place um, would you feel less, least comfortable going to? I probably think the takeaway shop. Not so much downstairs where the shop was, but being upstairs where the living quarters were, I, wouldn't, I don't think I could do it. Only because it was kind of initiated there and there was a couple of terrible things that happened there. And um, yeah, I, I don't ever want to see that room again. I mean, when I look at that photograph you sent me of the four of you standing, you know, a summer's day in the early 80s, you just look like a group of kids. That's all we were. We were just a group of kids. And sadly, from that moment there, that just group of kids was no longer. What's it like for someone that is on the periphery of this, these sort of crimes? I mean, particularly for a child. Hmm. That's hard. And again, I wouldn't want to speak for Jason or for anyone in a position similar to Jason, but, you know, they're really the unnamed victim in these kind of situations because, you know, he escaped being the victim of sexual abuse from his father. What's happened to Jason isn't going to be the subject of a trial or a sentencing hearing. But he went through a pretty awful time and he's probably racked with all sorts of complex feelings from relief to guilt. So he's, he's a victim, but he's often the unnoticed victim, I think. I'm nothing like my dad. Um, I never will be like my dad. And I've proven to a lot of people, you know, like I should be violent when I was a kid, you know, I should be the most violent man in here, but I chose not to. Everybody has a choice in life what they want to do. Whatever happens when your child stops at you and your stops when you're an adult and you do not pass it on to your kids. You let your kids see the love and give them the love what they need to what you didn't get. And what's left of the family, your sister, you, your daughter, and even your ex and your um, new girlfriend and Sean and everyone? Yeah. How important for you is it to keep them all together? Extremely important because they all mean more to me than I ever had. And the impact of your dad being caught as some sort of answer, how does that fit into that puzzle of keeping the family together? Um, makes me want to stand up for them and not let anybody go near him, uh, especially him. I won't let him go anywhere near these, my family now because this is my family I've never had when I was a kid. And just to see him now makes me happy inside. So I've got to keep moving forward, show them that I'm strong and that's so that I'm soft inside when anybody can put it over me. What are you thinking? Yeah, it'd be funny to see him walk down that way. You think you'd recognise him? I would. I've got a photo of him. Yeah? A recent one? Yeah. Oh, really? Fucked it down. So he's somewhere in there. Hey Dad, how you doing? I hope you're enjoying yourself in jail. 
I've been doing some research on you, Dad, and there's a lot of mysteries that uh, doesn't make sense with me. I know Mum had a kid before me, but was adopted out. So I'm curiosity. Are you the dad to that child that was adopted out? I've got lovely people around me now, because you weren't around me at all. And that hurts more. You're not having a dad or mum that loved you, that hurts. And not knowing who I was. So you want to fill me in on a lot of the other things I've appreciated. Especially the three kids in Sydney business, I don't know. But I know there was a, th there was a third and I need to know from you. I do hope to hear from you soon. From your son, Jason. Not bad. Let you know, Naz um, packed up and left. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I was at work Sunday night, come home, and she was gone. I had a, I had a hunt that she was going to go. Well, that's, I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. That's no good. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to keep moving on and quite showing my ghost hunt. Yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> Go in there, how are you going to compromise what, you, what, what I want what I want you to do? Improvise and just talk to it and just say, I'm not scared of you. Try to think of something that's going to evoke her to do something to you. But I am going to get it to scratch you. I want, I want it to do everything to you. Alright, uh, Sean, new idea would it come up? But you did well, I'm very impressed. Okay, good. You stepped up. Yep. And you got, you know, you're getting there. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Uh, I was packing shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty scared. Messenger. Mm -hmm. When are you going to go and do something about your tablets? I will. When? When the time's right for me. It's right, Jason. This when is... I'm ready. The more you nag, the more I put it off, Jess. You know? Why? Because you're going to get... You're angry. No, I'm not. I'm not angry. You... You get angry, Jason. We've all seen it. You snap. Mark's seen it. I've seen it. Sis. Laura's seen it. Your daughter's even told you. It says I'm more happier now that I'm single. No, Jason. Well, you lost it and you tried to kill yourself no. in the car. You tried to OD yourself. It was only a couple of weeks ago that we had to... Jessica had to jump in the front seat and grab the tablets and you were going to go and kill yourself and... Yeah. Stop well, trying to put... hide it all and think that you can help others yeah. to avoid your own issues. Yeah. Because I'm getting counselling too. Yeah. Because we, you can't think that you can help others and not think about yourself. Yeah. You've got to fix you before you can help other people. Mm. I'm trying to tell you this for your own good mm. because at the moment I don't know from one day to the next when someone's going to ring me and say Jason's done himself in. Ah, that's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Just 
he's, he's, a, he's a ticking time bomb. His daughter's worried for him, mm. and my, and your daughter has said it too. I've said to Jessica, I said, talk to your dad. And he, she says, I've tried, he won't listen to me. That was a fun, lovely meeting. Yeah, what do you reckon? Ah, oh, she's just playing games. <laughs> you don't think she means what she says? Yeah, she does, but I don't see myself having an anger problem. That's a problem. Like, that's a funny thing. You know, I'm so happy inside. It's not funny. That's what she doesn't see. You know what I mean? She doesn't see how excited I am inside. I just left um, Linda's house um, after filming with her and Jason. She is quite worried about him um, because apparently about two weeks ago he attempted suicide again or threatened to commit suicide. So I'm just a bit worried about him. Only that he hasn't shown any you know, distress or anything around me. And I've always asked him, is he okay? And even when we left, I said, are you all right? And um, he said, yeah, I'm fine. And, but it's clear that he's not, because he just, it's like he's in denial or just doesn't want to hear it. But there's just a lot of pressure on their family. And Jason's not talking to anyone, it sounds like. I guess I can just appeal to him and say, look, you know, that, that in order to continue, you, you know, you need to maybe get some help or um, I don't know, maybe I'd... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Firefighters have saved a home in Sydney's west after a blaze tore through the property overnight. Thankfully, no one was inside the Laylor Park house when smoke started billowing from a bedroom just after 10 o'clock. Crews managed to stop it spreading to other parts of the house, but the bedroom was destroyed. Uh, we've had a house fire. Um, We've lost everything that we own, our birds up here, our lizards over there, literally our lizards. That's over there is where the faulty comes from. That's where it had it all started. That, that fit in there? Yep, that fit in there. That's what caused all the fire for our house. Was anyone here at the time? No, there wasn't. Just the birds. And the bird didn't even have a chance. Not a chance. We bought a lot of food the day yesterday, went shopping, spent our last bit of money for shopping, and we just lost everything, tire everything. What next? So I, I just got to start, start from scratch again, start my life up again, and just got to keep going forward, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. I've got to keep moving forward. I told me my brother can do. Things go through my head and I'm starting to think, you know, well, why am I here now? Well, I've got nothing to live for, basically, myself. But Pete nags me and he just comes and tells me, you know, come on, you got your friend Sam, you got your good friends around you. Sam is like my bloody sister here and, you know, she helps me, you know, she was there when the house went down and. Yeah, in about 10 minutes, she was there and, and, and you know, and her, and her boyfriend, yeah. You know, like, much as what's happened now, I can't stop because if I stop, I fall down. Yeah, and if I, if, I, if I don't have something to do, I will go insane, you know what I mean? I will just give up on myself. And how's your relationship with Sean? He's been a bit up and on, like, he's been at me. He, he doesn't realise what I've been like, you know, lose, 
been through this before. He's backed away. He understands you now, like, I'm hurting inside. And I've been there and I didn't want to be in this situation ever again. <laughs> when I first met him, he was real nice and all that. Even when he was married to Margaret, and now he's not with the family no more. He's just turned real cranky and mean. Like, when he, he like, grabbed me around the throat, hit me, and all this, and go off at me all the time. Like, it's not a Jason on you. No, so. Were you scared of him at the time? Yeah, always. It's like, when his attitude changed, I was scared of him all the time. And when did this start? After when he found out all about his dad. That's when he started to change. I know he's gonna, I know he's gonna eventually see this, but I don't care. <laughs> but seriously, I don't care. I don't care about him anymore. And he reckons he was my brother, but he was never a brother. And one thing, if a best mate says that you're a brother to someone, they don't grab you around the throat or hit you or anything. I'm done. I'm done with all the guys done and I'm done with him. That's it. Uh, well, on Sam's property, out in the middle of nowhere, out past Penworth. Um, a lot's changed since the house fire. It's just sleeping here at the moment, where all my blankets are. Got little pillows. So at the moment, I'm sleeping in here. How long do you see yourself being here? For a while, I mean, Sam are talking. Um, you know, like, instead of me going and paying for rent, I'll give them some rent money and I'll be staying in that garage in there. They'll set up something for me. And so I have my own privacy. They've got their privacy and, you know, just try and help the best I can with them. Message received today at 3.17 p.m. Hi, Jason. It's Ellen from the detectives at Marrickville. Jack's been at court today and he's indicated that at this stage he's going to enter a plea of guilty. So feel free to give me a call back if you want to have a chat. Yes. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Got time. Far out. That's amazing. That's good. That's good. So you pleaded guilty. Yeah. Mad. Wow. All those charges. Well, he can't Most get away with it. No. He, he knows. Mm. Wow. You're getting somewhere now. You're actually... Once he pleads guilty and he goes to um, whatever jail he goes to, the mm. next step is me going in there and talk to him about, see was he the dad to Peter? Yeah, yeah you're going to ask him. I, got, I have to ask him. Yeah, I have yeah. to. You know, that's a mystery. He's been with us for a long time. Yeah. He's done it. You're getting there. You're getting there. One step at a time. You're getting there. It's all right. You're getting there. One step at a time. Especially one step at a time. You're getting him in. Don't worry. Time, time heals everything. Yeah, it will. You're gonna make me cry now. <laughs> you know, after everything's been done and all the people he's hurt, you know what I mean? Like, just, that's gonna be a big burden off me, you know, and knowing that I didn't back out for what I said I was gonna do with my dad. And yeah, my sister might be my dad, but he's nothing to me what he's done to everybody else and me and my sister. So it's like a big, you know, a bit of a relief from my side and finally. I feel like I'm overheating, but I'm shaking with coldness. <laughs> stop here for a second. Hey, we'll no, stop. I want to go. Okay, look at I need to move. <laughs> uh, hopefully he comes out, you know. Um, as I said, I want him to see me with the victims and say, you caused this, and now I've got to fix it. Hi. Oh, you Fuck, it's been a long time. How you going? Good, man. I told you I was going to be here for you. Thank you. You know I would. I know. You all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's struggling with his gum. <sighs> Hi. Hi, how are you? 
Be nice to meet you. You too. Good, good. We'll take I was just saying, I know I'm together. stressed because I'm feeling hot and I'm cold at the same time. I know. Yep. Is Ellen here yet? No. We're going to do this together, mate. All of us are going to do this together. Good. Let's oh. go. I'm shaking. Can you feel me? What happened? Didn't get to see him. Uh, I was looking forward for seeing him. Then the big date's the 16th of September. I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be here supporting Kathy and everybody else who might turn up for that day. Kathy means a lot. She's, um, she's like a sister that I never had. I just want to be here for you because what he's done here shouldn't have happened to you. And as I said to you, I'm not him. I would never look. Oh. Okay. I don't ever want Jason to feel that I feel that he is just the son of the pedophile because that's not the case. To me, he's a victim. You know, he's a victim in his own right and I think it's extremely sad what happened to him and... To me, I think he doesn't remember any of it. I think that's a blessing. But then I understand his concept too. I understand how hard it is not knowing and trying to put your childhood together and try and remember something of your life. And sadly, he's trying to do that and they're not really good things, you know? He's trying to find his past, trying to find his dad and in the process, he's found a whole lot of broken people from his father and then in hand become a little bit more broken himself. How do you stop people thinking that you're like your dad? Do the opposite. So I'm caring, I'm loving. Do anything to help anybody. Much as I've got a two socking sides of the family for myself, but I'm nothing like any of them. Yeah. I'm me. I'm Jason, I'm not John, not my mum. Yeah, yeah, and I heard all that. He's moved, has he? He said he moved pretty quick. Yeah, um, because I got Kane to speak to him because I did tell I thought him it was too good to be true. Because... I thought, this guy's so nice. Like, he's really nice. He'll help anybody. Never heard a fly. Like, he's just, you know, he's just struggling. He's trying to get somewhere in life. And all the stories he told me, I felt for him. I felt really genuinely, like, sorry for him that he's going through all these things. But as time went by, I was picking up little things here and there that didn't make sense. And then actually seeing it for myself, the way that he spoke to Sean and um, making out to be that he was a protector of Sean. And, you know, he, he told me that it was his house and Sean lives there. And then I later found out that it wasn't his house and it was Sean's house. So all these little white lies started coming about. The thing is, he believes his lies are reality, so therefore he's not lying. That's what scares me the most. You don't know what's real and what's not with him. And I don't think he know. he doesn't know either. It's like he's got two people in his body. So people had warned you about this dark side of him, this um, other side of him, yep. which didn't match. It's not even like, I mean, I haven't seen that and I've had plenty you know, of people warn You've known for seven years. Yeah, and I've never seen it. I saw it. And I, when I first saw it for myself, I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, he actually, he actually does get angry like this. Like, and seeing someone physically hit someone in front of you, it's not, not a comfortable feeling, not, not a comfortable environment to be hanging around. He needs help. That's it, he needs help. He should be told by someone, you need to talk about your problems, you need to move on with your life, you need to just Think of yourself. That's the big problem with Jason. He tries to control everybody else around him and thinks that he's giving him life lessons, but he doesn't look at himself.
does. And literally, you know, she's just going to give you a call. She wanted the number for some reason, so I was like, oh, okay, why? She's not this personal, so okay. you're going to get a call from her, okay? Okay. You know, I just want to see you put a story out there, Ben, of the truth. He can be very aggro. He can be very manipulative, you know. And I'm not doing this because I'm not talking to him. I'm doing this because I'm sick and tired of people getting hurt and used because of his lies. That's why I agreed to talk to you. I've had enough of him abusing women and, you know, their ex, his exes come to me and say, Linda, Jason's done this, Jason's done that. And I've said, well, you know, you should really go to the police and get an AVO. Don't let him get away with it. expose him, he's probably going to run like hell and say he's going to kill himself. I don't want it to have a damaging effect on you. Know, I don't want any of this to but sometimes, stress. But, but sometimes you have to push that bar for him to get the help. Because mm. he's going to go through life abusing women and he's just going to keep getting away with it. So where are we off to first? We're just going to drive around. Cool. The chat I wanted to talk about is the whole, the whole thing, mm -hmm. and um, just in the time that I've known you, so much has happened mm. in your life. Yeah, I know. Had to fight my way back up, I did. But not without, you know, paying the price, yeah. causing damage to yourself and causing damage yeah. to other people. I mean, the thing, the thing that I feel is that you've had two attempts at suicide mm -hmm. since, since I've known you. Mm -hmm. And there's been two domestic assaults. Yep. You know? And I had no idea. Mm. But people ring me and talk to me about you. Yeah. People tell me about stuff that they see another side to you that I don't see. Why, why wouldn't I have seen it? Don't know. Just so angry at myself and depressed. Um, I didn't know who I was. I was arguing against myself. And, like, I just didn't know who I was, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But you hit those women. Yeah, I mean, I've just heard too much to ignore it. Yeah. You know, and, That's fine. and you know, I've seen. Um, you know, your record and all that now. Yeah. But if I found someone, would you go and see them just as a start? Yep, sure. 100%. I'll be there. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. Do you tell me when, day, I'll be there. Okay. Jason. How you doing? Thanks for meeting me. Oh, good to see you, mate. Please have a seat. Thanks, mate. Wow. OK, so my name's in your hospital records. Yes, it is. OK, well, yeah. I've got to say, I... if I can help you, I will. I hope so, yeah. because there's a lot of mysteries for myself. Um... You know what I'm thinking, Jason, as I, as I, as I think about that, that time of your life? Mm -hmm. People like your mother often struck me as 
almost being children themselves. <laughs> they were children in adult bodies trying to bring up other children mm -hmm. and they repeat the cycle generation over yeah, generation. I, I don't that. know your mother, I don't know your father, yeah. but chances are if they neglected or abused you, uh, they learnt that. Yeah. It's not a decision they made because they didn't like what they saw mm -hmm. in you as a child. Yeah. I mean, a child is innocent. A child never deserves mm -hmm. to be treated that way. I know my child wasn't the best. I mean, I can't blame my actions as an adult and what I've done. But this year has been really extremely bad for me because, like, you know, everything that's been happening around me in my relationships, I've got two AVAs because of all the stress and everything I've been under mm -hmm. and I snapped. Apparently, I hit my, hit my girlfriends. But I don't remember that, but I don't remember him hitting the girl. But I took the ABAs and beat a man, I said, well, if I don't, I'll take, I'll take the blame. I told me, I'll take it, and I've got the ABAs. And I walked away. Mm -hmm. And I can't change them, I wish I could. But I look at myself, I said, no, I could do better. I've got to get up, I've got to stand up and take responsibility for myself and move forward. Mm. I admire that you want to do that, but I also understand that a child who's been through what you've been through from the age of two. Like I hear you saying I want to take responsibility, but I also see a man who's um, been moulded and shaped by events in his life yeah. that you had no way of controlling. I know. And, and I want to make a change of that. In every family, it takes one, one brave soul to break a cycle. That's what I wanted to do. And it sounds what like I you're doing to... it. Yes. Well... I just want to change what, what my family's all about. Mm. See, Jason, often guys like us, we're tempted to think we're defined by our past. A man is not defined by his past. A man is defined by his heart. And when you look at a man's heart, you see what he wants to do and what he tries to spend himself in doing. It's irrelevant whether he succeeds or fails. What's relevant is you know mm. the value of your family, you know what's important. Yeah? I do. Yeah. Big thank you to you. Big help here. You all right? Yeah, just needed a smoke. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty powerful. I haven't, I haven't heard you speak like that either about, <laughs> about the stuff you've done. Yeah. So, did that? What did that feel like talking just, about that? Just get off my chest, being honest. I didn't get the love, but I gave my daughter my love. Mm. And that, that's the difference for me. No, I, I've done right. Mm. I've done wrong. Mm. It just made me feel better. You know, knowing that hearing that what he's told me it was really good. It's powerful. Check a PO box today um, to see if there's any mail from my dad. Um, I sent him an, um, a letter asking questions, and hopefully, that he might have replied back with some answers and stuff like that. Two letters. Jason, thank you for your letter. And yes, I can probably guide you through all questions about your family. There was never a third kid. The mother only had two kids with me. I don't know if she had a kid by somebody else. I knew nothing about your childhood struggles. Had I known, I would have found you and brought you to the better place. I believe after reading the charges against me that there has been lots of lies. Reading them actually made me sick. 
There is so much I want to tell you. Remember, never feel that I don't love you. Hope to see you. Love, Dad. He's basically denying what he's done. Yeah. What do you take out of it? Yeah, he's, just, he's a lying crap. He can't admit for who he is. You know what I mean? Like, he has to lie to keep lying so people can believe him. Instead of being honest and go, yep, I did it. I want to I face my time. He's basically running away from it. That's my opinion. Now, you know that other letter that was in there? Mm -hmm. I'd written a letter to your mum. Oh, Jesus. It's from her. Oh, God. You want to read it? Yeah. Ben, I'm writing this letter for the last time, so go and get fucked. Don't ever come near me. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so that was her response to us. Wow. I don't think she's too happy about the documentary. Good. What did that answer for you about Peter? He didn't have a kid. So obviously my mum's had a kid before him and adopted it. But it's still the same for me. He's still my real brother, 100%. Yeah. That, that would never change for me here. What, why has this connection with Peter been, been so important to you? With me, Peter's always going to be a hero in my eyes and I want to be like him. I don't want to be like my mum. Don't want to be like that, no way. I want to be here like my brother. I want to help people. Yes, as I said, I've made mistakes. I will admit it, I have. But I'm going to prove to a lot of people. I'm never going back to that stupid old person who was in that hole. What are you trying to prove? Prove to people that I'm not bad. I'm not that guy. It's been hard. But I had termination. I wasn't going to stop when we first started. You asked me, you sure you want to do this? And I said, yes, I wasn't going to fail this time. I wasn't going to back out. This is Julie's house. This is Julie, my lovely girlfriend, hanging out with my bird. It's all right, mate. I know the cat scared you. Maybe carrot. Yeah. Yeah, they get along all right, the cats, and it? Oh, uh, yeah, the cats learn to stay out of the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. It's all right, mate. You don't have to be scared. And, and Julie loves her bunnies. She's got all these bunny rabbits. I bought these three over here, plus this one over there. They're females, these are males, but... Yeah, this is home, and they've also got four cats. So how did you meet Jason? Tell me that story. Uh, we met online. Um, I joined a couple of paranormal groups, because that was always my hobby. And what did you know about his past, and was there anything that concerned you? Uh, um, I heard about his previous relationship and what went wrong. Um, what was that? What did he tell you? Uh, that he had an AVO and that he'd been charged with these things. And you described seeing him as two different people in a way. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, look, there's a wounded child in him. Mm. And when I met him, he had no self-esteem or confidence in who he was whatsoever. And um, I could see what he was capable of and I've been teaching him to be more confident and be relaxed in himself. And, just enjoy who he is and, and know that he's going to be loved for who he is. Because mm. I think he always had to act to be somebody to have that acceptance of people. But he can just be himself with me. OK. You want, might want to grab some of the children. Yeah. OK. Here we are, hey? Eh? Yep. Back in here. So do you remember when we first met? Mm -hmm. It was 2010. 
that person you presented to me, who was that? A fake person because I was just, I was trying to fight myself. Um, I wanted to be that Jason, that happy boy that you met. And when nobody was around, I'd, I kept going back and being, you know, this guy, I didn't know who he was. It's like having an angry kid inside for, you know, because of the abuse side, it just been so angry, he just wanted to get out. He wanted, he wanted to get out so much, but I was trying to stop it. And then I just lost it, I couldn't control it. Destroyed everything I had. Literally destroyed the entire life for me. And when I finally woke up and realised what I was doing, by then it was too late mm. to do anything with my relationships. Can you still see today that you struggle with what happened during your childhood? Yeah, I do, sometimes I do. And I'm trying to stop all that for myself. Because both you and Linda were totally innocent. You yeah. were just young kids. Yep. So was Kathy or the others. Mm. They were innocent. That's probably another thing that's probably eating me up. I was blaming myself. But a boy seeing what was going on, I said, you know, I thought, you know, I sort of stood up and copped it. But years come on, I knew it was, I couldn't have done anything. And it's a good feeling that, that they don't blame me. They don't blame me for anything. You were just kids. But I worry that there will be times there will be other challenges up ahead. Bring it on. I've got a good family, friends around me here now. I've got Julia yep. who understands. I can sit down and talk to her, what's going on in my head. And it's more of a relief to be able to talk than have it locked away and not be able to let it out. Julia's taught me that. Julia's taught me how to be me. So that's one woman I can say. She stuck through me so a lot. And so yeah, we're gonna get married. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. Can't wait. It's great, it's wonderful news. It's a bit weird me being on my own. Normally I've got my team, mm. but the team couldn't be here tonight. So try and work out a game plan how we're going to attack this thing. Um, I know it's in the shed, and she says that she gets sick inside. So I might attack the outside first and try and get an idea what it's up to tonight. It's around. I can feel it. Cheryl could never, ever go in that little back part of the shed. She cannot go in there, full stop. OK. And she just seems to be getting worse and worse. And how would you feel after tonight I got her to go in there with me and face it? I'd, if she could do that and face, well, I suppose they say face her demons, I don't know, that would be fantastic. What is your name? Why are you here? Come on. You're a bit pussy for a ghost. It's like he's walked away. I don't know where he is. How about you come out and see what it feels like? Do you trust me? Yes, I think I do. I can come in here. Yep, try. Trust me. Trust me. He's not there now. Trust me. I bet you. You're gonna go and go, hang on, something feels weird about this place. There's nothing here. No, there isn't. How's it feel? <clears throat> well, lot better, than, lot better than before? Oh, I couldn't have stood here before. 
I want, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna give you this torch. Yeah. I'm gonna go and stand there up there, here. right? Mm -hmm. Hold that torch. Yeah. Come in. Come in. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna pop out here. And you tell me. No, there's what do you make it? No, there's just nothing in here. How's that feel? <laughs> no. You like it? Uh, huh? Yes, I do. Just take your breath. Don't, don't yeah, try to push I'm your body. How did you do it? How did you just went? I started evoking it. And my brother was here. There was a spirit world. Yes. And I had another guy here. Yes. He started getting tensed and suddenly he just went dead. It's like, where did he go? Watching me.